Hi, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is almost every way to cook a steak. All right, we're looking at a whole bunch of steaks. What makes a steak a steak? Well, typically, a steak is a cut of beef that is tender enough and contains enough intramuscular fat, or marbling, to be cooked quickly, as opposed to tougher cuts that are used for braising or slow cooking. There are a whole bunch of steaks on the cow, but today, what we're working with is the boneless ribeye steak. We love this cut because it has plenty of marbling, these thick ribbons of fat that keep things nice and juicy, and a tidy, compact shape. And we're going to cook it every way we can think of. Let's look at some ways of not cooking a steak, shall we? First up, steak tartare. We're simply going to dice our steak into nice little pieces. People like to put all kinds of things in tartare, but here we're just going to use some egg yolk, olive oil, black pepper, and salt. Boom, steak tartare. It's really pretty. It's nice and kind of glossy with the olive oil and the egg yolk. Mmm, really delicious. You can really taste the beef in its purest form here, and the bitterness of the olive oil backs up the grassiness of the meat. This is an amazing way to eat raw steak, if that kind of thing doesn't make you squeamish, that is. Carpaccio. We're gonna cut out a nice centerpiece from our steak, we're gonna butterfly it, and then we're gonna sandwich it between two pieces of plastic wrap and pound it out until it's about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch thick. A little salt and olive oil, and voila, beef carpaccio. This looks great. However, you can see that there's some kind of gnarly schmears of fat in there, which isn't ideal. Carpaccio is usually made with a leaner cut like tenderloin, not a fatty one like ribeye. Mmm, it's still really tasty though. Beefy and clean, I'd love a little spicy arugula and shaved parm on top. Raw steak smoothie. We're gonna cut our steak, toss it in this high-powered blender, pinch of salt, a little bit of water, let her rip. Oh, that looks truly foul. Okay, there it is, folks. Steak smoothie. Honestly, it smells horrible. I don't know why, it's just water and steak, but something about the processing did something truly evil. It looks like a cross between pink slime and a strawberry milkshake. It's so thick. Oh. It's horrible. This is truly disgusting. Do not try this at home, folks. Seared steak. First, we're gonna hit both sides of the steak with plenty of kosher salt. It might look like a lot, but steak really needs it. Then, we're just gonna give it a straightforward sear on both sides in this smoking hot cast iron pan. All right, nice coloring around the edges, but not so much in these center parts that didn't make contact with the pan. The interior looks really nice, but there's a bit more of this overcooked gray ring that I'd like. Mmm, I'm not mad about it. It's still tender, but would have been even more juicy if that fat had had time to soften. Not bad, but not perfect. Seared and basted steak. We're gonna salt it and get the steak into that smoking hot pan. Now that we've got color on both sides, I'm gonna turn the heat down, slip some butter in there, and baste it a bit until it finishes cooking. Wow, this smells amazing. We've got a little bit more browning because we didn't have to rush the meat out of the pan. We've still got a bit of that gray layer. The fat is really nicely rendered. Wow, so juicy and delicious. The nutty brown butter mixing with the beef fat is really something. This is definitely the tastiest stovetop only method, but it's probably best for a slightly thicker steak. You know, it's getting a little smoky in here. Let's take this steak party to the backyard for a bit. Grilled steak four ways. We've got a whole steak that we've oiled and salted. We've got cubes of steak that we've threaded onto skewers. We've got some thinly sliced strips of steak that we've woven back and forth onto skewers. And then we have some thinly sliced beef. And we're gonna pull each of these off the grill as they're ready. Grilled steak. One advantage of grilling over pan cooking is the heat is so much more intense, so we're seeing much better caramelization. Wow, the interior looks awesome. We've got an almost wall-to-wall -wall medium rare. Mmm, super juicy, a little bit of smoke flavor, plenty of char. This is one of my all-time favorite ways to cook a steak. Cubed and skewered steak. We're looking at way more surface area here than on a whole steak, so we've got more beautiful char all around each piece. Wow, look at that perfect interior. Mmm, really tender, tons of brown flavor, still impressively juicy. This can be tricky to get right, but when it's right, it's really, really right. Sliced and skewered steak. Here we have even more surface area than our cubed steak, so we've got even more char, which is awesome. Mmm, there's still a bit of pink, but it's definitely way more cooked. Mmm, even though it's not medium rare, we've traded that perfect interior for tons of crispy, crackly, charred bits. This is really tasty, but would be even better with some kind of soy sugar glaze. Thinly sliced steak. So here we've completely maximized surface area. These took on a ton of color, but they're all gonna be well done no matter what. Mmm, not bad. A smidge on the drier side compared with the other grilled steaks we've tried, but they've got a ton of good smoke flavor and plenty of char. All right, let's head back inside, shall we? Toaster steak. Okay, first things first, we're gonna have to cut our steak in half just to get the pieces to fit in the damn thing. We're gonna pop it in and see what comes out on the other side. Pop goes the weasel, it's done. 
Okay, the exterior leaves something to be desired. This fat cap actually browned pretty nicely. I'm kind of expecting the inside to be a mess. Wow, more gray than I want, but not too shabby temperature-wise. Pretty nice, actually. Definitely wish there was more caramelization, but shockingly not bad. Easy Bake Steak. This may be the first time anyone has ever cooked a steak in an Easy Bake oven in the history of the world. It's not gonna fit, so we're gonna have to trim it to fit this teeny tiny tray. We're gonna slide it in here to bake and flip it halfway through. Voila, Easy Baked Steak. I mean, honestly, it's completely gray, but it's hard to tell. It seems to be neither raw nor cooked. Oh, there's something wrong with the way it tastes. Honestly, it's kind of pretty juicy, but it tastes like plastic fumes. I gotta spit this out. Laser steak. I gotta put some safety goggles on because this is apparently the most powerful laser that a consumer can buy. Behold, the Thanos 5000 megawatt laser pointer. We're gonna put the batteries in, screw it together, and then use this key to unlock the safety. Uh, yeah, there is a safety. And uh, now we're good to go, I guess. Let's let her rip. Yeah, no, it actually looks this crazy. It's not Photoshopped, I promise. Okay, I guess it's done. So here we have our laser cooked, mostly not cooked steak. This is pretty much a raw steak with this little patch here that does seem to be kind of cooked. So I'm gonna try to kind of excise that. I feel like I'm performing a biopsy. Okay. Oh, no, <laughs> something is horribly wrong here. It tastes like burnt hair. No more lasers, not ever, no more lasers. Stir fried steak. We're gonna slice our steak into nice thin pieces because the idea here is that we wanna throw them in and cook them as briefly as possible. A little bit of oil, meat goes in, toss, toss, toss so nothing sticks, and we're done. Stir fried steak. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say that we could have left these in the wok for another minute probably. We've got some nice char around the edges here, but a lot of bits that are still a bit medium, medium rare. Mmm, there's a distinct wok flavor going on here. It's this specific irresistible smokiness that I associate with this kind of cooking. Shaved and griddled steak. We're gonna lock our steak into this deli slicer and shave it really thin, the way you would for a cheese steak. We're gonna oil up our smoking hot griddle and slap the sliced meat down. We're going for maximum caramelization here, not a medium rare. Now we're gonna flip it, use our spatula to shred it up a bit. Nice. So this is really all about the contrast between the fully cooked but still juicy steak and these very browned bits. Mmm, super succulent. Those crispy bits are almost like bacon. So, so good. Get me some cheese whiz. Steak burger. We're gonna take our very cold steak, cut it into chunks, and feed it through the meat grinder. Now we're gonna form it gently into a fat patty, season it with salt, and sear it in a hot cast iron. Mmm, burger time. Look at that crust. We've got a ton of nice browning around the edges, and it's very tender since we packed it so loosely. We basically deconstructed and reorganized the steak. Mmm, yum. I don't even want a bun. The contrast is killer, but you could get a similar result with a cheaper cut of beef, honestly. You know, I'm ready for a little fresh air. Let's head back outside. Campfire steak, three ways. This first steak, we're gonna slap onto this preheated rock. This one, we're gonna put directly onto these hot coals. And this one has been mummified. We covered it with salt and wrapped it in wet cloth for some reason. Now we're gonna flip these over and they should be done. Hot rock steak. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty disappointed with the crust here. Yeah, it's a hair overcooked and pretty underbrowned. Mm. Honestly, it's fine, a little extra smoke flavor, but I can't see why I would bother with the rock. Coal cooked steak. Wow, we've got some really impressive color going on here, but I can tell it's a bit overcooked and there's quite a bit of graying here. A lot of smoky flavor though, and still pretty juicy. On the whole, I love this method, but it's a bit of a wild one. Good, but tough to control. Mummified steak? Okay, this is clearly a hot mess. It looks like a burnt diaper. Oh, still on fire, hold on. Okay, it's really unevenly cooked and the outside is really disappointingly pale. Oh, it's horrible. It's inedibly salty and tastes like a burned t-shirt. I feel like I have to go inside and take a shower now. I feel filthy. Boiled steak. Who would boil a ribeye steak? We would. We're gonna season our water with salt and just slip our steak right in there and we're gonna pull it out when we've got an internal temperature of 125 degrees. Yummy. All right, so no browning at all. No Maillard reaction is happening in such a wet environment. It looks gross, just gray all over and that fat looks especially nasty. It's pretty perfect inside. It's 
tender, but it seems to have lost some of its juiciness, and medium rare with no browning at all just tastes kind of flabby and gross. Hot pot steak. We've got our pot of hot broth bubbling. We are gonna slice our steak as thinly as possible. And now we're just gonna lower our meat right in there and let it cook for no more than 15 seconds or so. And then we're gonna pluck it right out. Ta-da! So if we were really eating a hot pot, we'd be putting pieces in individually, pulling them out and eating them immediately with rice, maybe a dipping sauce, instead of cooking it all at once in just plain old chicken stock. There's no browning at all. That's to be expected. Hmm. It's not bad, it's very tender, but typically this would be made with a much more flavorful broth. Steamed steak. You know, for some reason, this seems even grosser than boiling a steak to me. We're gonna season our steak, plop it right in our steamer basket, close the lid, and set a timer. I guess it's done. Steamed steak. This looks pretty identical to the boiled steak. It's maybe a little less soggy looking. It's pretty rare, but I really don't like the looks of all that unrendered, unsoftened fat there. I mean, it actually tastes a bit better seasoned than our boiled steak, which is a plus, but the flavor is pretty indefensible. Braised steak. We're gonna start by searing the steak on both sides in this Dutch oven. Then we're gonna add just enough liquid to almost submerge it, cover it, and let this slow cook for about two and a half hours. Well, that is definitely well done. Uh, while some of these outside pieces are really tender, this eye of the ribeye is actually pretty tough feeling. Mm. I mean, it's beefy tasting, it's not bad, but I feel like the steak gods are really mad at me for this one. This is one expensive pot roast. Sous vide steak. We're gonna season our steak, we're gonna pop it in this plastic bag, and we're gonna use a vacuum sealer to suck out all the air and seal it. Then, we're gonna put it into this pot fitted with an immersion circulator, which is gonna keep this water at a consistent 128 degrees for the next hour and a half. And now that our steak is a perfect medium rare inside, we're gonna get it out of the bag and sear it on both sides just until it's browned. Boom, done. We're seeing pretty good browning here, which didn't take much time at all to achieve, and that inside, whew, a perfect, almost wall-to-wall -wall medium rare, and that's the big advantage of sous vide cooking. It tastes great, but there's a slight, almost sponginess that I don't love. It's perfect technically, but it's a little bit soulless, if you ask me. Baked steak. Who's excited about baked steak? No one. This is oiled and salted, and we're gonna pop it in a 350 degree oven for about six minutes. Now we're gonna flip it and give it another six, and that is done. All right, I can already tell that this steak wanted way more heat. No caramelization to speak of, and this fat isn't looking so good. I mean, it is nicely cooked inside, though. It's tender, but I wish it had been seared first. 350 was definitely not enough to get the job done on its own. This feels like half a way to cook a steak. Broiled steak. So baked didn't work out that well. Let's see if we have better luck with the broiler. We're basically gonna do the same thing, just a little bit less time and at a higher temperature. Give it a flip. Ooh, smoky, I think that's done. All right, we're looking at a disappointing lack of color. The fat got a bit crispy, but that's about it. We've got a lot of that kind of gray ring here. It wasn't quite hot enough, I think. Hmm, not terrible, but I'd much rather have a steak cooked in a pan. Why don't we take a backyard break while some of this smoke clears? Searsall steak. We've got our steak. We've got our Searsall, which is basically just a modified blowtorch, and we're gonna use it to apply really, really direct high heat to the whole surface of the steak. Wow, it's getting really hot. All right, that's gotta be done. I'm calling it. You know, it was a pain in the ass to hold that hot blowtorch for so long. We've got some really good color going on here. But cutting in, there are some parts that look nice, some that are over and some that are undercooked. It's not awful, and I really appreciate the flavor of that crust, but it's too difficult to cook the steak evenly this way for me to want to do it again. Steak on a stick. So we've got a steak impaled on a stick, and we're gonna cook it caveman style right over the flames, turning it every few minutes or so so it cooks evenly. Oh, <laughs> God, it's really smoky and really, really hot. Okay, that's gotta be done now. So the exterior is really more singed than anything else, and it's definitely on the rare side. Hmm. A lot of smoke flavor. I mean, this isn't a bad method necessarily, but holding it in front of that fire was pretty uncomfortable and tedious. Afterburner steak. We've got a chimney full of hot coals here. We're just gonna put this steak directly over the chimney like so. This thing is hot, people. Time to give it a flip, and she's done. 
We've got some impressive browning, almost verging on charred, but it's definitely a little uneven. This definitely would have been better with a bigger chimney or a smaller steak. The inside is actually pretty gorgeous. Mmm big smoke flavor, really juicy, but there's some gristly bits that need more time to render. This method has a ton of potential. All right, let's take this back inside. George Foreman steak. We had to do it, folks. Steak goes in, close it, and let the boxing box do its thing. We've got grill marks, but we don't have the nice, even char that we like to see. The inside's fine. Hmm. Not bad, not great. Waffle iron steak. Now we're gonna sling this steak into a hot waffle iron and see what happens. We're gonna have to weigh it down so it stays closed. Wow, that is something. We've got some decent color at those points of contact, nowhere else, and it's definitely overcooked. Hmm, yeah, pretty dry. There's no reason to cook a steak this way. Infrared grilled steak. So this spooky looking thing is an infrared grill, which apparently is okay to use indoors. We're gonna slap the steak right on there. It doesn't seem that hot considering how little it's sizzling. All right, that should do it. I think this maybe haunted the steak more than it cooked it. Very limited browning, uh, and it's not terrible inside, but there's a little more of that gray than you wanna see. Hmm. I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't see why you turn your kitchen into a haunted house when you can just heat up a pan. Pass. Pan to oven steak. We're gonna try a bit of a hybrid method here. First, we're gonna sear our steak on both sides in this smoking hot cast iron pan. Then, we're gonna transfer it to a 450 degree oven and let it come up to temperature. And it's done. Okay, we've definitely got some pretty good browning and it picked up some extra color probably in the oven. Mm, I don't love the inside. A Little bit more of the gray. Yeah, mm. I like it, but it's not nearly as precise as some of the other methods we've seen today. Pan to broiler steak. Similar, but a little bit different. Now, we're gonna sear our steak in a hot pan and then finish it under the broiler. Give it a flip. Ta-da! Impressive color. The broiler did a lot of good work, and the inside is pretty spot on. Hmm. This is surprisingly good, better than the other panda oven method. I still think that fat needed a little bit more time to render, but not too shabby. Reverse seared steak. This time, we're gonna put our steak in a 225 degree oven for about 25 minutes first, just until it's medium rare. Then, we're gonna sear it in a hot cast iron pan for about a minute on each side. Just like that, it's done. Reverse seared steak. Amazing color on this one. And I'm loving the way the interior looks. Great wall-to-wall -wall color, and the fat looks wobbly and perfect. Mmm, great balance between that tender, soft meat and that crispy exterior. This is definitely one of my all-time favorite ways to cook a steak. Deep fried steak. Everything's better fried, right? We're just gonna season our steak and lower it into this pot of 350 degree vegetable oil and see what comes out on the other side. Let that extra oil drip off and we've got a deep fried steak. That hot oil delivered really, really even color, which we like, but it's also kind of greasy looking. Yeah, it's a bit overcooked. Hmm. I think this method could work really well, but deep frying is just kind of annoying. Country fried steak. Normally you'd make a country fried steak with a cheap, tough cut, but we fancy. First we're gonna use a meat mallet to pound it thin and create some texture. Then we're gonna dredge it in seasoned flour, then an egg milk mixture, then flour again, and then deep fry until it's golden brown all over. Damn, that looks good. So we've got this beautiful golden battered exterior, but that's coming at the expense of any actual caramelization of the meat itself. Yeah, the inside is definitely more medium to medium well. Mmm, I mean, it's delicious. This is definitely a great way to cook a steak, but not such a pricey one. Freeze fried steak. We're gonna score and season our steak, and then we're gonna freeze it completely overnight. Now that it's rock hard, we're gonna deep fry it so the outside is crusty, but the inside is still totally frozen. And then we're gonna bake it until the inside comes up to temperature. And then we're gonna fry it again so the outside gets extra crispy. And there you have it, folks. Wow, incredible color from the deep frying. Some of the best we've seen today. But that inside is, is very impressive, but not 100% perfect. Mmm. The seasoning really penetrated though because it had so much time to sink in and it's really tender and really flavorful. It's a neat party trick, but a little overboard considering what we were able to get with the regular old reverse sear. All right, let's take a smoke break. Smoked steak. The smoker's all fired up. We're gonna pop our steak in there for 20 to 30 minutes so it can cook through, and then we're gonna finish it on a super hot grill. 
Oh, this one smells amazing. It's almost like pastrami. And that crust is gorgeous. Exactly what we like to see. Oh, that beautiful color. Wall-to-wall -wall pink, really juicy looking. Mmm, yum. This is really special. Tons of smoke flavor, delicious char, so, so succulent. I'll definitely be doing this again. You know, that was almost too good, which probably means it's time to make a microwave steak. All right, we're gonna take our beautiful, pricey ribeye steak, salt it, and put it in the microwave for a total of four minutes, flipping it halfway through. Happy? I'm not. Ugh, this looks gross. Honestly, it looks like prime rib that's been regurgitated, like it cooked from the inside out or something. Oh, this makes me wanna cry, honestly. Promise me you'll never do this, okay? Instant Pot Steak. All right, we're gonna use the saute function to brown both sides of the steak, which seems to work actually pretty well. Then we're gonna add water, pressurize the pot, and cook it for about 10 minutes. And that is an Instant Pot ribeye. We've got these fattier exterior pieces that are soft and still rich, while the inside muscle is really dried out. Mm. It doesn't taste bad per se, but this would obviously be so much better with a chuck roast or other cut of beef that begs for long, slow cooking. Not this beautiful steak. Slow cooker steak. Before we slow cook our steak to death, we're gonna sear it on both sides. Then we're gonna put it into the slow cooker with just enough water to submerge it and set it on low for five hours. Oof, that does not look good. So after all that time, this steak really shrunk up. I can tell that it's gonna be a lot drier than our braised or Instant Pot steak. Mm, this is sad. Five hours was too many hours. Sorry for doing this to you, steak. Steak jerky. We're gonna cut this ribeye into thin strips, salt them, and then pop them in the dehydrator to dry out for 10 hours. All right, let's pull these out and take a look. Looks like jerky, all right. You know, what's interesting here is how much color we got at such a low temperature over such a long period of time. Yeah. If you handed this to me, I would say it's great beef jerky. But knowing that it could have been a juicy, medium rare steak, that hurts. Dehydrated and seared steak. So now we're gonna try a slightly different version of a reverse sear. We're gonna use the dehydrator for the initial cooking instead of the oven. This is gonna cook at 122 degrees for about four hours. All right, slide that out. Now that it's up to temp and the outside looks kind of jerky-like, we're gonna sear it quickly in a cast iron pan. Wow, that looks good, huh? Obviously that took some time, but that outside color is worth it. This is probably the best caramelized steak we've seen all day. And that interior, stunning medium rare. It looks really rich and glossy. I can't wait to try this one. Wow, this tastes incredible. Really complex brown flavors. The fat got soft without rendering out, so it's really juicy and the flavor is super concentrated. This is an awesome way to cook a steak if you've got four hours on your hands. All right, today we cooked a whole lot of steaks in a whole lot of different ways. What did we learn? All of our favorite versions were evenly browned and crusty on the outside and uniformly pink and juicy on the inside. There are a whole lot of different ways to achieve this result, but by far the most effective methods combined a low and slow technique with a hot and fast one. Also, just say no to microwaves. Oh, and in case you're wondering, we used all that leftover steak to make a killer batch of chili. Have a favorite way to cook a steak that you didn't see here? Drop it in the comments.